Hi, my name is Sam Simmons from Project Geospatial, and I'm here with Planet Risk. And uh, these gentlemen are going to introduce themselves and talk about the product that they have. Let's start with you, Mark. Mark Dumas, Chief Strategy Officer of Planet Risk. My colleague, Steve Gardner. Hi, how are you? Steve Gardner. So what we're going to show you um, our AIMS tool, which is corp it provides corporate situational awareness for our clients. Um, but, and there's actually national intel intelligence clients as well. The same interface can be used in both sectors. Um, we've got a, a lot of nice uh, commercial customers already with this tool. And what it provides is a complete picture into their operational status. Um, we track everything from their airplanes to their executives, do executive protection around it. We track social media around their executives for executive protection. Um, we can look at maritime assets. And most of all, we look at their physical assets, like their real estate. And the whole idea of this technology is to monitor the globe for threats, threats and risks and intersect that with their assets, whether they're static or dynamic, and alert them to the changing conditions on the planet. And of course, everybody wants to be aware of what's going on. So this is, this is the front end of the company. Um, we've got a lot of great stuff happening on the back end with big data and big data science. But this is kind of like the, the tip of the spear, if you will, where they can, uh, people can interact with our data set. So with that, um, Steve is going to maybe take you through the software. Well, quick question real quick on these alerts. These are near real time for your customers, right? This is not just like the day after and things. Right? Yeah, there's a big premium on alerts within, say, the first three minutes of, of an event around the world. Um, if you get to, you know, if we were to have a client, a, v, a VIP client, and something is five minutes late, that's not, we don't like that. We have like our own metrics for that. We want to be within the first three or four minutes. Now, you know, listen, if it's 30 seconds off, uh, if, um, you know, um, or something like that, it's not going to make a big, big difference unless people are like going to start trading hedge funds with our, with our alert feed. Um, and maybe one day they will. Um, but that first uh, three minutes is the premium turf. After that, um, we put a premium on um, what's, what's the lessons learned here. So, you know, there's good media sources out there, news, uh, articles that are released that really enrich the content of what we know to be around certain events around the world. And so those things happen, we call them uh, low frequency, high value. Social media is a good example of high frequency, but it's just a little blurb. And that's usually good for like the canary in the coal mine, right? But the low frequency, high value is, is like a time article that has, you know, seven pages on like what happened in Paris. We can go back and look at that, or analysts can look at that and enrich what we know about that so there's a full continuum and appreciation for stuff that's a little bit more latent than the stuff that's near real time. Now, great. So you got a demo for us to, to, to see, right? So right. Sure. let's yeah, go. Do a demo. So to Mark's point, I uh, just want to piggyback on, on some things. This is our uh, third GEOINT. We're part of the USGIF, and uh, we're excited to show our stuff to the DOD and other government uh, type customers. So what you're looking at here is just one of many uh, pieces of the pie with all the stuff that we do around open source, data fusion. This picture is you're looking at uh, protest activity around the globe. So besides the real time aspect, a lot of our clients really like the uh, ability to go back and look at the historical aspect because that can sometimes help you tell the future. So you're looking at these hot spots of different protest activity. We're taking in all different types of intelligence. So protest activity, criminal activity, all the way down to just weather, transportation incidents. So we can help our cl uh, clients and analysts focus on different things that they want to filter in on. So I'm going to kind of change it up just real quick and show some of the real-time dashboard aspect. So we're going from a more of a static map of looking at some analytics to uh, this is some real-time data streaming into the platform as our clients see it. So we're not putting any dummy data into the system. Uh, it really kind of wows people when they come by and they actually ask, is this real data coming into the, to the system? So a couple ways we can kind of serve this up for our clients. They may have a physical asset or to Mark's point, someone traveling around the globe and they need intelligence around where those people are at. We can also take a concept of an analyst has an area of interest that they're responsible for, like Nigeria or the continent of Africa, and they need to know about certain compelling events that may be converging, and then they get alerts based on that information. So if I just click on this uh, red icon right here. Uh, speaking about the icons, can you, can you go over the different color schemes here and what those mean? Absolutely, so the red, yellow, and greens that you see on the top are based on that particular client's risk profile. So what we do is we sit down with each client and understand what do they care about? What are the key indicators? What is the proximity in and around an event? So if I hit this drop down real quick, we could see the different types of events we cover. 
um, that can also be tailored to that particular client. So we kind of take an all hazards approach of the different types of incidents that can negatively impact. What are those categories based off of? Where do you, where did you, how do you define those? So we do have a methodology in terms of what we decide to pull. So for this particular aspect, we follow the official DHS theory guidelines on all hazards types threats. So there's a methodology in place of things that we decide to track um, and what our analysts follow when we're putting information in. So they have a full vetting process and looking at all the data and deciding on uh, what is the best source, what's the most accurate source when they're uh, putting that information in. As, again, as I filter, I can look at information uh, streaming in. I can look at my top priority incidents. As I drill into the map, um, it does a geofence around the area I'm looking at. So now we'll see our information updates based on the information that we're looking at. Then we can drill in to a particular incident to find out further information. So now you see the dashboard has now changed. So the content is, uh, is bounding box based. Correct. Yep. So we can help the analysts uh, put a filter around uh, the geography. They can see any potential assets affected. They get a summary of the information. And another nice feature is they have the ability to uh, go out to any open source that's attached um, to that particular event. Um, so at the end of the day, what it comes down to is giving our analysts and end users the ability to access uh, a lot of different information. This is just one tiny feed coming in from all the other different feeds we have access to. So as you can imagine, there's a lot of open source data out there. We also tie in critical infrastructure data, um, just trying to give our, our analysts um, a lot of power behind not just the tools, but the, the data they have access to. No, great. Is there anything uh, else uh, last minute that you'd like to say about your company or, or, or the application that you want to tell people? Well, one thing I'd like to promote is we actually have an app that we just launched this week that we're really excited about. Um, it's available in the iGAP store, so it's a government available app um, that any government employee can download for free. So what we decided to do was take an API of our incident data, port that in uh, to that application, with some other standard uh, things like State Department alerts. We partnered with a company called Optensity that helped us develop the app, um, and that is currently available. So we're trying to get the word out here to a GeoInt that folks can go download that application. How about yourself, Mark? Yeah, I just want to say a little bit of a corporate high-level thing, um, is that uh, you know this is really just the first phase of what we're trying to do as a company. Um, we really want to push that message of inter enterprise risk management for commercial and national security. Um, we've got clients that um, literally have truck jackings and they want tools the drivers have and we're tying it all together. Um, with my background in predictive analytics, some people know me from that, you're going to see a whole new class of tools in the next 6 to 12 months where we're doing very hyper-local trending around risk and threats. Uh, we're looking at data signals and where things converge and things go to a tilting point and we can like alert a customer uh, that we feel like there's a probability of something's about to occur before it actually occurs. Now, you know, you can't be a crystal ball, but we can get into some pretty good heavy-duty statistical theory around where we expect certain things to happen and not, and where we see patterns emerging, because not every square mile the planet's created equal, right? And so we're going to start to score all of that and make all that really come to life. We're going to bring that available to the system. And one of the things that the system isn't showcasing right now is that we have um, a ton of data vendors beneath the hood. And we have everything from pipeline activity to um, fiber optic lines to every building, uh, most of the Western Europe and the United States. We have an amazing set of data, weather, global weather, 30 year history. All this stuff is in here. So we're, we're starting to, to do some really cool things around smashing the atoms of what does, it cert what does it mean to see certain things occur and how can we see those leading indicators to see something ev uh, evolve. Great. Look, so we have some uh, real exciting stuff to look forward to, especially beyond what you're showing here. All right, well, thank you very much. And uh, once again, I'm Adam Simmons from Project Geospatial, and we'll see you next time.